Heather Egan Addis and I'm here with Chaden and some of our course participants in the back of the dining room at Sammy Ling where we've been doing the Compassion Based Living course teaching skills retreat and this is Jan. Hi. <laughs> this is Tracy. Hi. And this is Zana. Hello. And this is Chaden. Um, yeah. <laughs> <Got it on. laughs> Yeah. So, so what have we been doing here this week, Chaden? Um, we've been going through the MBLC, CBLC curriculum and people have been uh, uh, guiding practices and giving little talks and doing inquiry and we've been giving feedback. So that's been, that's been what we're doing. And how's it gone so far? It's gone really good and surprisingly well, actually. That people have been really, um, actually really... Um, teaching with a lot of experience and a, there's a real depth actually to, to what people have been doing. Lovely. Why is compassion important in your life? I didn't know for a long time that it was and I thought I was quite compassionate um, to myself but it was only when I did the compassion year training that I realised actually that a big part of me was frozen and quite numb and it was on the very last part of the last afternoon of the last weekend and just had this upsurge of grief uh, for my mother who had died 20 years previously. And it was just like opened the door and obviously it was quite painful. But at the same time, it was a huge relief because I had said when she died, I I'll not cry and then I'll feel bad. And so that was the start really of showing that um, me that it was okay for me to have these feelings and just opening my eyes to the fact that I'd been avoiding them for a long time and thinking I was probably being quite cool and was, I'm fine coping. So uh, because it's, I think it allows you to have those feelings and be okay about having them. So life is lighter, mm -hmm. I would say. I think I probably take myself less seriously. Um, if I am suffering, I probably sometimes still struggle a bit to really go there, but I've got good friends who've also done this kind of work, so that's really helpful. And um, it just, certainly after this week, it's really become much more embedded for me. I feel I've got a greater understanding. I know that sounds very heady, but I've just got, we've done so many practices that I'm feeling it much more in here that, yeah, it's okay. And that I'm talking about that from my experience now, not just a theory. It has been an amazing journey. Um, when I look back before I started on this journey of mindfulness and self-compassion, I remember that there were, I always felt this sort of um, sadness in myself. Um, and and that there was always a, a, that my mood was often low, particularly at the weekends when I you know, wasn't busy at work and stuff. And um, it was like there was something wrong with me, but I, I didn't know what it was. And I was trying to fix it with all sorts of activity and running away and stuff like that. And, um, and it was only when I began to practice mindfulness and, and particularly compassion that I actually realized that, that, that I was believing a lot of stuff to be true um, that, I have, that, I, that I hadn't seen before. I felt that that, that was a part of me that was felt it, that I was bad and, um, and, I, and I could never be good enough. And um, so with mindfulness, I was able to see that and with compassion, I was able to, to hold that in a, in a kind way. Um, so it, over the last four years, my life has just transformed. Um, present company accepted but I do feel I'm the happiest person that I know um, I just feel you know um, I'm just ha joyful most of the time and, and obviously I do feel low at times but but I can I, I've got now um, resources that I can be with it um, and be with it kindly and um, know that it'll pass um, and the other thing that uh, why compassion is so important why I'm on this course is because I've been teaching uh, the mindfulness based living course to my patients yeah. in the NHS and the part of the course that has transformed them more than anything is the self-compassion practices you know I just see such um, trans the transformational power of practicing self-compassion and, and then how it connects them to other people and they feel much more um, involved with with their families and, and people you know their friends and yeah it's just transformative 
And will you build on that with your client group by teaching them the compassion-based living course? Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can already see, um, particularly like um, individually, one to one with patients. You know, in the you know we were in bed in the hospital because some of my patients are in in the hospital for six months, on and off um, at a time. Um, so I was thinking that things like the uh, you know the safe place practice and compassionate being you know all these things you know they'll give them something that they can draw on it at night when they're on their own and it's you know and that's when our demons come and, uh, and people ruminate um so yeah i think it's going to be very valuable oh that's wonderful um, thank you like uh zona and tracy compassion's transformed my life it's made it uh, you know it doesn't take pain away and it doesn't take hard stuff away but it gives you resources to face it mm -hmm. uh, and it helps you to face other human beings on an equal footing yeah i think that's a big thing for me that you learn that you're no more messed up than everybody else and no less messed up than everybody else uh, uh, you know so that's the big thing and when i first started on this journey of course i didn't know that uh, when I first started on this journey, I really wanted to help other people. I, uh, my work is mainly with people with drug and alcohol problems. Yep. And I knew that what cripples them is stigma. Mm. And that most of that is internalised. Yep. They don't really hate themselves. And I knew that there had to be an answer to shame and mm. compassion might be the answer to shame. Mm. What I didn't know then, you didn't let me in, in on to start with, was that I'd have to, to be able to pass it on, I would have to go through that process myself mm -hmm. and face my own shame. Mm. Mm. And I didn't know it'd be so hard and I didn't know it'd be so wonderful. Mm. And I didn't know I'd learn so much and yeah. I'd be so much better for it. And I'm very grateful. Mm. So what do you notice about your life now that's changed from training in compassion? Um, oh, how to start? I think it's the, the, the most important thing is being able to be with unpleasant feelings, mm -hmm. uh, being able to deal with, you know, I've been through some major traumas since I started the course. Yep. Uh, I've been through some major grief. And I think I remember at that point saying, this is the most painful thing in my life. And I'm feeling the pain, but I'm not suffering too much. And I'm glad I can be open to this pain because being open to the pain values the love. Yeah. But if I'd suffered too much, I'd have run away from it. Yes. So I had to learn to be able to be with the pain. And the compassion training allowed me to do that. Yeah. And that's why it's really transformational. And, and, and what now? What, what's, what's that like now? What's, what's the result of all that, having gone through the pain? I mean, I guess some of it's still there, but what, yeah. what's it like now? Well, I, I'm grinning, you know, and Tracy said, I, I, you accept it. Life can be joyous. Yeah. Uh, you can really appreciate joy. I mean, the next thing that's going to happen this evening is that I'm going with some of my colleagues for a walk where we're, we know that one of the most beautiful things is going to be the stars. And we know we will really drink in the joy of those stars instead of just walking under the sky and not noticing them. Yeah. So it's coming alive to life and the joy of life. Well, that's wonderful. Thanks, Jen. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so compassion for me, I think the, the biggest thing for me also, as uh, Tracy mentioned, is about the personal transformation. So um, I also like Zana went into the compassion bit thinking, yeah, I'm pretty good on self-compassion. Yeah, I'm, yeah, no, no problems here. And <clears throat> but by the end of the modules that we did on, uh, on compassion, <clears throat> my world had just kind of opened up in a way that I never expected to. And it was a really big surprise. That it was like, oh my God, all this stuff has just risen up for me that I didn't realize I'd been running away from and I'd, you know, I'd neatly tucked it away and hidden it away. And um, yeah, so suddenly I had to deal with that. Um, but I had the tools to be able to face that. Um, but the thing that I love about compassion is that, you know, if you're not ready to deal with something right there and then, then you'll find a way of knowing when the time's right for you. And so you, it doesn't force you to have to deal with anything 
here, now. You, you do it when you're ready and you do it when the time's good. And that is, you know, within the keeping of self-compassion, that it's not this kind of really difficult thing that you're not ready to deal with. So that was my journey in terms of things opening up, some stuff I parked and I came back to, and some stuff I dealt with then. Um, but it, it, it opened my eyes to how... Um, the, see, the thing I love about self-compassion is the, the paradox about it, that self-acceptance is fundamental to self-compassion. And yet, by really fully accepting yourself for who you are, or as fully as you can, then suddenly all this amazing change starts to happen. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and you suddenly you're like, oh my God, you know, there's, I, can, I can suddenly start to see things differently with more clarity and I can start to uh, deal with things with a bit more stability and I'm happier, I've got better relationships. You know, the list is really long. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's all just by the, what sounds very simple idea of saying, hey, you know, I'm actually starting to be all right with who I am. That's lovely to hear. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think since I've since I've been uh, practicing the compassion practices uh, since the the MSc, so for about five years now, what it really has uh, allowed me to sense in myself is a sense of perspective because of the bigger picture of humanity. And um, you know, when you were asking me to perhaps talk about how Poland is developing and so on, I um, I thought about it for quite a while, and and that was that's an element of that's very important for me um, in the practice that I'd like to also share later on is that is the sense that I'm not alone in my suffering, and I also, I've also had a very difficult kind of turbulent transformationally really difficult last few years, um, and yet that kind of feeling that I'm actually you know, part of a bigger picture and that I can um, resource uh, practices which will strengthen me uh, has made a huge, it's been like a glimmer of hope. I don't know, I don't know how I would have got through them without mindfulness and compassion through those years. That's really honest. I don't know what I would have done. That's lovely. Thank you, Anna. Thank no, you for it's, sharing. It's kind of great. It's so nice to hear people's stories and uh, just to hear how people are sharing about, it's kind of almost like hard to take in, in a way. You know that we spend time developing this course and writing materials, and it has this, unin well, not unintended, but unexpected impact, you know, on so many people's lives. It's kind of, in some ways, hard to process, and uh, and but nice to hear at the same time. Yeah. So maybe I, maybe the thought I have is that like we like vehicles for some deeper wisdom or something bigger that's coming through us. It's not religious, mm -hmm. but something is coming through us, and we just vehicles in the Mindfulness Association for something to come through us and touch and transform people's lives. Yeah. And being part of that feels, yeah, really good. Yeah, I know for me that, that a lot of job satisfaction comes from the fact that what we're able to do is transforming people's lives. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. Can I say something about the first time I met Jane? Yeah, of course. So the first time I met Jane, I'd re already read Mindful Compassion by yeah. Gilbert and Chodin. And I was blown away by that book. And then, um, you know, I arrived here for the first time on the MSC course, and we hadn't even started classes, and you came and introduced yourself to me in Vitala yeah. House and shook my hand. And I thought, that's Chodin. That's the man who wrote that book. <laughs> He's actually <laughs> teaching us. <laughs> and, and now, this much further down the journey, and it's back to that key message, now I know Chodin as a human being who is a vehicle and is... Uh, yeah we have that common humanity and I have yeah. still the deepest respect for but I've also laughed with you so many times <laughs> and I, uh, that in itself is a journey I think yeah so thank you for that so yeah, thank you and, and I think that's probably one of the things that um, is, is part of the mindfulness association approach that we do have a good laugh mm -hmm. and we don't take it all too seriously would anyone like to say anything else before we finish can I just share yeah. um, um, I just want to share about somebody who did my course um, in October. Um, he was a man who just couldn't stop ruminating. Um, he's got three cancers. And all he was doing was spending his time on uh, websites, searching for the answers about his cancer. And then he'd, and he'd go on chat rooms about to talk to other cancer patients. 
Um, and he emails me probably every other day um, to tell me how much mindfulness and self-compassion has changed his life. <laughs> he, it's the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to him. He's, seven, he's about 72 years old and he feels so much, his, the way he feels about other people. You know, when he's out in the street, he just feels like he loves everybody. And um, it just, it, it, it's just, I can't believe how this man, has, he says he doesn't even really think about his cancer anymore. You know, and, um, and he's been practicing now. I mean, that started, after about eight weeks of doing a course and he's been practicing now for about six months and he, he just seems to be going from strength to strength and is and it's, and i just find it so humbling and i you know i want you guys to know just what you, you know this and we we've all got probably got stories like this and yeah, that's just sure. one person and you know i can tell you about lots of other people in my you know done my courses and then the impact that that's having on their families and then their families mm. and so it, it's just amazing yeah. Mm. So, please don't realize, underestimate what you what you what you've done. Mm. So the benefit is spreading out in air widely. Yeah.